Y'all bear with me just a minute. I forgot my notes. I have paper notes. Too many things to remember. So this morning we're going to do a little study about faith because um, it's right in line with what everybody's talking about. Brother Wade ministering to us about adoption, about the stature of perfect man being, you know, faith being the foundation of that. And then Brother Aaron talking about on that lesson that we know, well, we know that only comes from faith, you know, from a certainty. Um, He's been preaching a really good little series about that. And then now Brother Bob getting into Hebrews 11, also about faith. I don't know exactly what all directions he'll go, but, you know, I just want to keep us meditating on that same thought. Um, Right now we're not connecting here. So maybe they'll get that going here in a minute, my PowerPoint. And uh, Brother Bob was talking about how that faith... Uh, the whole whole reason that God's word has such strength and such power is because the integrity of the man, Jesus Christ himself, because he is truth. He is nothing but truth. He cannot fail. He is all truth, I mean to say. He cannot fail. His word cannot fail. So he has this integrity, this character that's steadfast, that's sure, and that's why his his word has such power. And then if you think about it on the opposite side of that, the devil, the reason his word has no power is because, you know, he has no integrity, no character. He's, you know, his word, uh, Satan's word will fail. He's nothing but lies and the father of lies. So that's why we don't believe Satan. So we're going to talk about faith. I want to just basically give you an overview, broad overview in a short time span. And uh, what is faith and how much power it is at, at, at its fullest form, the faith of Jesus Christ himself. I just want to give one illustration about that. And then talk about how do you get this faith because he made it available to all of us. So what is faith? This is not an exhaustive list. This is just a few things that came to my mind when I was making this lesson. It's not all that faith is, but these are some of the things. Faith is revelation, belief in God. When I was a Baptist, that's all I knew faith was, is, well, I believe in God. That's faith. But that's the beginning of it, but there's more of it. That It's a reality. It's a positive sense, a super sense, a long-range vision, a substance. It's the most powerful force. Uh, it's a journey that you're going on. And it's a place. And that sounds kind of odd. So I'm going to talk about that, especially in this lesson, about faith as being a place or a position. Uh, Some definitions here about faith relating to Christ, a uh, strong and welcome conviction or belief that Jesus is the Messiah through whom we obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom of God. The religious beliefs of Christians, belief with the predominant idea of trust or confidence, whether in God or in Christ, springing from faith in the same. Fidelity, faithfulness, the character of one who can be relied on. That's what Brother Bob was talking about the other day. Um, Last time he taught Sunday school, talking about that we can rely on God more than anything. Hebrews 11 definition, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. It doesn't say faith is just the substance. You've got to be careful not to think that, well, that's all faith is, just the substance of things hoped for. No, like I said, faith is a lot of things. It's a really broad subject. It's a really broad thing, and it covers a lot of ground. But faith is, among other things, it is a substance, that's for sure. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are made are not, things which are seen are not made, were not made of things which do appear. The statue of man, Brother Brennan said, notice you must be born again. And when you're born again, you can't be born again without having faith. That's right. So you see in my chart here, I got the very foundation. Faith is the foundation of all of it. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He must be. And when you're a skeptic of the Bible, when you're a skeptic of the word being right, you just might as well stay back until first you believe it. So that's the beginning of faith. Keep that in mind. Believe in God. And that's a choice. Nobody makes you believe. 
You decide in yourself, I'm going to believe in Jesus Christ. What is sin? Unbelief. There's only two elements that control a human being. That's either doubt or faith, one or the other. You're possessed of one. That dominates your life. <clears throat> it just depends on how much faith you have, how high you can rise. But first, it's got to be faith. Let me stay on that foundation for a while. Faith is what you must believe. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's you already have it when you have faith because it's a revealed in faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what is it, what kind of evidence, a holy evidence. And then why Christ speak, Brother Brandon said, for you see, faith sees what God wants done. So it has something to do with the will of God, the word of God. Faith doesn't look at the present time. Faith doesn't see this here. Faith looks to what to see what God wants done, and it works accordingly. That's what faith does. It sees what God wants and what God wants done, and faith operates through that. Faith is a long-range vision. It don't lower its sights. It holds to the target. There's a lot in here I'm going to get to about divine healing. Hopefully, i got time for all that. Answers on uh, Question answered on Genesis. Now, back there then. This is my example of my illustration of God's faith. God spoke his word in creation, and he believed his word, so he mixed his word with his faith, and you're talking about a lot of power. Um, back there then, when this little halo comes, now we can't see nothing yet. This is Brother Bam talking about creation. But just by eyes of supernatural, we see a halo standing there. Now that's the Son of God, the Logos. Now I can see him playing around like a little child before the Father's door with all eternity before him. And now then in his imaginary makeup, he began to think of what things would be. And I can hear him say, let there be light. And when he did, an atom bursted and the sun came into existence. She whirled for hundreds of million years, forming clinkers and burning and forming like it is today. Still burning, still breaking atoms. If the atomic bomb would ever get loose, the atomic chain would take the earth would be like the sun yonder, just bursting and blowing. If you could stand over on another continent, I guess you could say he's probably meaning like another planet or whatever, and look at this, it would look like another sun where the atoms was bursting, burning this earth. If this chain would ever get loose and it just started turning, whirling like that, millions and millions of miles in each of these big flames, billions of Fahrenheit of the heat that goes off of that sun. Luke 137, I just want to quote a couple of scriptures here. With God, nothing shall be impossible. If thou canst believe, all things are possible in him that believe. But keep this in mind as we're talking about this great powerful faith that I'm illustrating here. Watch this now beautiful how he's made the sun. And then the first thing you know, a big clinker fell off and weighed about just like the earth here. Pew. <laughs> Went pew. Then this Logos here, now the Son of God is watching it here. He lets it fall for 100 million years and he stops it. And another one flies off and he lets it flow off fall for millions of years, then he stops it. Now we're standing watching it come into existence. Now he's got something in his mind, and what's he doing? He's writing his first Bible. I'm going to give you all some little things here. I like to look these up every now and then. This is interesting. It shows you how much God's in control and how powerful he is. The earth rotates at a thousand miles an hour. Anybody feel like you're moving a thousand miles an hour right now? Earth rotates at a thousand miles an hour. Earth orbits around the sun at 67,000 miles an hour. I think we, we feel pretty safe and secure, though. It sounds like God's in control. Sun orbits the galaxy. Our sun and its solar system orbits the whole galaxy of the Milky Way at 500,000 miles an hour, half a million. Half a million miles an hour. The galaxy is 100,000 light years across. This is a big place, not the universe. I'm talking about our Milky Way galaxy. They estimate it to be 100,000 light years. So if you can go the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, for 100,000 years, it would take you. That's what it would take you to cross this whole galaxy. And that's just one galaxy in this whole universe that this guy made, this guy Jesus Christ, with this great faith that he mixed his word with his faith and made this big of a place just this one galaxy out of many. There's 100 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, and each one of them has its own planet or planets orbiting it. About 170 billion galaxies in the known universe, they don't know the end of it yet. They can't find an end of it, last I heard, but it's a big place. Then estimated 200 billion trillion stars to take 
a trillion, 200 billion of those, and that's about how many stars in the known universe, just what they know of, what they can estimate. It's a big place, a super sense. It's the most powerful force that ever hit the earth is that sense called the sixth sense. It has nothing to do with this down here. If this down here ever declares it and this says amen to it, talking about you know, our, us and our natural senses, you know, to, uh, you're moving on. But regardless of what this does, and you know, our see, taste, feel, smell here, believe that, there's where the power, if you believe in your heart, your fifth sense of thinking lays within your brain, but your sixth sense lays in your heart. You believe with your heart. Confession is made by the mouth. You believe with your heart. Yes, sir, that sixth sense, that powerful force, un just limitless power we're talking about here, the faith of Jesus Christ. And he's trying to give us, he gave us each a piece of that. We each have that by measure. Faith is a substance. Uh, faith is only direct and positive sense, and it's a sixth sense. Faith is more than sight. It's more than feeling. You do not feel faith. You don't taste faith. You don't smell faith. You don't see faith. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. <clears throat> Ministry explained. Now, I hope this one thing and faith is another. Uh, faith is a positive sense. It's not a guesswork. You don't just imagine it. It's just as real as any other sense of your body, just the same as sight. Sight is real. Hearing is real. Uh, taste, feel, smell. Uh, sense of the body, control of the body. They're real faculties that if one of them is injured, uh, you're, well, let's say faculties to you if none of them is injured. And then faith is just as real as any of these other five senses and more real because it'll go in and above those five senses. So how do we get this great faith? God condescended in his attributes so we could receive them, right? So you think of like, Brother Wade used to say this, how do you eat an elephant? This is a great big faith, and we're wanting to come into this great big faith. Well, how do you eat a great big something like an elephant? One bite at a time, just a little at a time. And you can, you can do great things just by taking a little bit of this at a time, the Word of God every day. Read your Bible and pray every day, listen to sermons every day, just a little bit at a time. It's not impossible. God condescended in agape love by bringing it down to a form called filial love, or we can get some little grasp of it, some little piece of understanding of it. Same thing with the faith of God. He gives us this great big faith and just a little bitty piece for us to understand, just a, just a little portion of it, this childlike faith, just believing God. Romans 12, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. I've got just a few more here and then a video I want to show you all for an illustration. Jesus, uh, Matthew 16, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood not revealed unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven, and I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So faith is a revelation, and hell is against it, but it won't prevail. The angel of God, why can't we do that? Why can't we have that simple faith? If we would just be so, wouldn't be so trying to figure things out, it'd happen right here just the same. God's no respecter person. He just respects faith. Brother Aaron quoted that the other night. God doesn't heal you on the merits of your salvation. He heals you on the merits of your faith. Now, here's a quote not from Brother Branham. I'll tell you in a minute who it's from. If you're a child of God... God has to meet you somewhere. He's got to. He's obligated to his own children. If you'll make yourself available, say, God, take me somewhere. I want to know more about you. Y'all know who said that? How Brother Wade. Last Sunday. <laughs> okay, Matthew 21. And then when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is a fig tree wither? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast to the sea, it shall be done. And all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Faith is our victory, and faith is a victory that overcomes every curse of the devil. Faith is a victory. Faith in what? Not faith in your church, not faith in your creed, not faith in some man. but faith in Jesus Christ who made the promise, that, the, and that's the victory. What is it? It's the victory. Say, my arm is still crippled, but faith is a victory. I still feel sick, but faith is a victory. It overcomes the world. When you can climb into God by prayer until you see the thing conquered under you, there's nothing that can hurt you then. You've overcome. You've got 50 miles of elbow room. That's Brother Aaron also quoted that the other night. You're still, you're sailing free then. 
Now, that's probably all I'm going to get to of my PowerPoint. Probably the rest of this will take my illustration here. And y'all really pray for me because I have a thought that I really want to get to y'all. I really hope I don't run out of time on this. So the other day, as well as last month, I went on a flight. I took Mercy and Iva up to Walker Mountain, which is a mountain between, kind of between Cleveland and Gainesville. And we live close to Walker Mountain. I've lived close to Walker Mountain since I was a little, since I was about two years old. I've always lived within about 10 or 20 miles. I've watched it my whole life. I went to Walker Mountain Elementary School. It's just always been a part of my life. So I thought, well, I'll take our girls and we'll do a little sightseeing. We'll fly over Walker Mountain and then over our house. Then the next month, I took our other two, Harmony and Eula. I flew them over the mountain, same, and over our house. But there was a big difference between the two times we went. The first time, it was sunset, and it was just overbearing, so much light. It was blinding. And the mist over the mountains around Walker Mountain, and all these mountains all around were just obscured from my view. I didn't even notice them. I, had, I knew they were there, but I didn't even notice them. And we were just taking pictures and videos, and then we went back and landed. The next time, I said, where did all these mountains come from? Because all of a sudden, it was overcast. It was raining a little bit when we got around the backside, what I call the backside of Walker Mountain, the side opposite from the view of our house. It was kind of raining on us, and it was clouds. And all of a sudden, we could see really clear for miles and miles around. Okay, And I saw all these other mountains, and I didn't even hardly notice Walker Mountain. Now I'm looking at all these other mountains in this range of, I guess, North Georgia mountains, Blue Ridge Mountains, whatever all the mountains they were. And I thought, wow, there's something to this. So I went back and looked at the video, and I figured out why it was. is because there was too much light on that first flight. So I said, wow, there's a, something spiritual about that, too. If you think about it, there's a lot of symbology in that. When you come to faith in Christ at the very beginning, when you believe, you've come into a place. Remember, I talked at the beginning about it, faith being a place. You've come into this place, and there's all these mountains, but at the beginning, you cannot see them because they're shrouded in unbelief. All you see at the very beginning, because of that mist of sin, all you see is maybe one mountain, justification. And if you keep around that one mountain long enough... Walker Mountain, by the way, is named after a man named Walker. His last name was Walker. If you think about walking as a Christian journey, you have to keep walking, right? You start believing in faith, justification, that Mount Justification. You come to that first mountain, just keep on around that until you see Mount Sanctification come into view. When you see that mountain, now you've got two mountains in this whole big place called faith. There's a lot more out there that you don't see. But you keep on going on this journey, and you'll come to Mount Baptism of the Holy Spirit. You'll come to Mount Statue of perfect man, you come to mount, uh, you know, faith for, for divine healing, for anything you have need of. Everything you have need of in earth's journey is given you when you're born again, but you have to drink and push out. Just keep on going on this journey. And walking is reading the Bible and praying every day. It's coming to church, it's listening to sermons. Keep on that journey, and you'll see these other mountains come into view. I had no hope, it looked like, as a Baptist kid when I was 12 and gave my heart to the Lord, came to that Mount Justification. All I saw was walk a mountain. I just kept walking. And then one day I started reading my Bible every day, and all of a sudden I came to sanctification, the washing of water by the Word. I saw Mount Sanctification come into view. I kept going, and I saw Mount Baptism of the Holy Spirit in 2015. And I kept going, and I had no idea about this message that laid up ahead of me down the road, you know, in 2002. That was long in my journey, and, and all these other mountains. You don't know what kind of mountains you're going to come to in your journey. There's mountains of victory, mountains of uh, revelation. Mount, well, each one of these is really a revelation. But there's all these little mountains of overcoming depression and, and lust and, and fear and, and anxiety and all these other kind of mountains, these mountaintop experiences you have. But ironically, the thing that kept me at the beginning, at this first flight from seeing those mountains, was the light. The sunlight was overbearing. And God knows how much light you can handle at one time, so he gives you just a little at a time. But that light was blind to me, and it was obscuring the view of the mountains, so I couldn't see them. But if I, once I, when I kept going, I could see these other things come into view. Yeah. Just keep these type of things in mind as we're... Y'all can play the sound. I don't know if that'll work. If they can't get the sound going, that's okay. But that's me and Mercy and Ivo on that first flight. Also, I'll mention too, last Sunday, Brother John Durrett mentioned patiently waiting on God's timing. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Thank you. Oh, it's up. If y'all don't get it going, it's no problem. It's no big deal. 
I can just keep talking over it. Because y'all still get the point just from watching it. But mountains are symbolic of permanent things because, you know, that anytime you think of a mountain, you think of something permanent, something big and solid. It's always going to be there until someone has faith to move mountains. You know, it's always going to be standing right there. You know, you can always rely that that mountain's going to be in the same spot every time you look in that same area. And when you have all these permanent things, that justification of mine in when I was 12 was permanent. I knew when I gave my heart to the Lord at 12, I'm going all the way with the Lord. I'm never going to stop. If I live to be 100 years old, I'm still going to be serving Christ. I knew that as a little Baptist kid, not knowing about everything that laid my journey, not knowing that i come to the message, not knowing that i come to something called sanctification. That was not even in my psyche. There was, there, nobody even taught that in the Baptist church. They said, just plead the blood. You can't help what you do, just plead the blood, which literally means just keep messing up, keep doing the wrong things you do, cussing, whatever else you do wrong, just Plead the blood. Ask God to forgive you. You'll be all right. But that was that first flight, and there's, you can kind of see the form, the shape of the mountains off in the horizon, but you can't see them clearly as we could on this next flight. And then we started on that next flight, though it was cloudy, though it was even raining at times. We got on the back side of the mountain like this, back side of the desert experience, and all of a sudden these other mountains came into clear view. That was you flying the plane. And while that's still going, I'll go ahead and start talking about this most important one I wanted to get to is Mount Divine Healing. I came to Mount Divine Healing somewhere in about 2015 or 2016. Most of you don't, well, maybe some of you have heard a little bit over the years uh, I've battled on and off with ulcerative colitis, which is ulcers in the colon, bleeding ulcers. And in 2015, I had the worst episode of it ever. And I didn't, as far as I recall, if I did anything at all here, I probably turned in prayer requests like an unspoken. I learned a long time ago Faith for divine healing is basically two things. You believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. And both those are, to me, are equally important. So uh, I wouldn't go around whining and complaining and even telling anybody. My, my mindset has always been on just keeping my mouth shut about it. I'm just, if anything, I might say, pray for me, I'm having a problem. But I'm not going to talk about all the circumstances. And I'm going to do my best to act like I'm healed until my body agrees with it. And... Uh, when I listened to Brother Brandon for the 40th time talking about Brother John Ryan, finally it quickened to me. And the sort of the mist of my unbelief rolled away, and I saw Mount Healing like I'd never seen it before, Mount Divine Healing in plain view. All of a sudden, I realized was you believe God no matter what, no matter what happens, no matter how low you get, you keep believing God and stand there in faith and believe in God no matter what. And don't confess the circumstances. John Ryan came up for prayer about being blind and he went away and he was brother Brandon said you're healed and he went away and he still couldn't see so he came back to the altar and he said I thought you said I was healed and brother Brandon said I thought you said you believed when that was quickened to John Ryan he went away and all of a sudden started confessing it until it happened and I believe he would have confessed it if his eyes never came open because he had the revelation that it's a long range vision you see that you're healed even if your body don't declare it no matter what happens you see that you're healed and you accept it and you believe it no matter what and um, then Brother Branham himself had that stomach ailment that was terrible. And he was living on a liquid diet. Finally said, well, I'd rather die. You know, if I, I want to eat solid food if it kills me, basically, I think is what he said on one place I heard him say. So he started eating solid food, and the doctor told him it would kill him. He did it anyway. And it tried to come back up, and he swallowed it back down. It came back up, and he swallowed it back down. So finally, somebody said, how you doing, Brother Branham? He said, I'm doing well. You know, praise the Lord for healing me or whatever. And he kept acting like he was healed, even though his body didn't didn't say that that he was healed but yet he acted like he was healed and i had a similar thing with this uh one of these episodes of um, bleeding ulcers losing a lot of blood and even being basically borderline anemic weak and feverish and everything else and not saying a word to anybody here the only one that knew it was gabby and um i wouldn't say a word to anybody i'll just keep confessing that i'm healed and now i'm perfectly fine not a, not a, not a symptom at all but I won't stop. If it shows up again tomorrow, I'll still be saying, thank you, Lord, for healing me.
Uh, this, I, obviously, I have Sister Frieda on my mind a lot, so um, just keep her in mind. That's why I mentioned that. It's for, mostly for her, and um, we're all standing with her in prayer. But that's the first flight that showed you just how much the mountains and everything was obscured by that, by that uh, mist and the sun lightening up and everything. You musicians can go ahead and come up. And the second flight, there still was mist over the mountains, but we could still see them because the sun was not shining on them so bright. So when you're going through those cloudy days and even some rain, just know that God has a plan. He has a purpose for all of that. He's got this all under control. He knows what he's doing. God bless y'all. Thank you.